Hello, my name is Charity Case. I'm a London-based creature creator, and today I'm going to be turning into a fantastical, fabulous disco fish. The disco fish is going to entail blue skin, scary, horrible bag eyes, and lots and lots of sparkles. So my first stage of preparation is going to be tying back this mane and having a little shave. Charity Case is a mythical being. She's bubbly, she's fun, and she's quite scary as well sometimes. I've been doing drag for close to seven years now. The first couple of years were more just experimenting with makeup and costume. It's lots of metalware, chains, bows, ribbons, ruffles, and lots of crystals. So now I'm going to mix my foundation in my gorgeous palette. I grew up in the northwest in Lancashire, in a really tiny little village, and I was literally the only gay in the village for my whole childhood, which was quite traumatizing <laughs> in a lot of ways. It's a really closed-minded, close-knit community where people haven't seen much expression from people like me. So I didn't fit in at all around there, and. I never let that stop me from expressing myself and I always saw fashion and looks as a way of showing other people how I felt inside. I, I knew that I didn't fit in anyway, so I wanted to not fit in even more and be absolutely fabulous. I'm just adding a highlight tone with my white cream blend sticks. I was really into Tim Burton, all of the characters from James and the Giant Peach and Del Toro and I'm not really into anything that's based in reality because I like to escape from the world that we live in. Like, I love Tarantino, Poison Ivy, She-Ra, Black Widow, you know, strong women who don't take no for an answer. So I've just finished doing all my highlighting in the middle of my face and now I'm using a darker blue to just like go around the sides, give it some more definition and do a little bit of contouring. So when I went to college, I studied full-time art and design. It was a really amazing experience for me. I found that I was really into my textiles and my sewing. I used the opportunity to try and learn as much as I possibly could about that. But halfway through the year, I transferred colleges down to London. Then I got kind of sucked up into the nightlife scene and I, I dropped out of college and became a, became a full-time um, scene kid, I guess, for a while. My college was like over an hour away on the train and I had to be there at like eight every morning or something for sign-in. And obviously when you've got to be there at eight in the morning, you don't want to be going out partying the night before. And I did want to be out partying the night before. <laughs> so my priorities weren't quite in order back then. I was like hosting a few nights and stuff. I would go out with just like a jock strap and some platform shoes and a choker. Like that was my, my general look back then. And I would think I was doing like club kid couture, which I really wasn't at all. <laughs> I was just being a slut. <laughs> Not that being a slut's bad, of course. So now I'm gonna go in with some more blue powder and just build up this, this contour on the side of my face. At this point, I was making a little bit of a name for myself on the nightlife scene here, but one night on a night out at a party, someone spiked me and took advantage of me, which was really hard to, to deal with and to, to accept as an 18 year old, that that had been my experience. A few months down the line, I was very, very sick and um, I ended up being diagnosed HIV positive from this experience, which was really quite traumatizing and, and hard to accept and to understand. I felt like I didn't really know what HIV was at this point. I felt quite uneducated about it. And drag became my escape form. It became my my therapy of sorts. It was my my way of expressing myself without telling people how I felt in words. If I felt woke up one morning and I felt really sad, I would paint tears all over my face and I'd be a really sad little doll that day. Or 
if I was feeling angry, I'd paint myself red and turn into a demon. It was just a good way of me feeling and looking how I felt without telling people that I felt really sad or really angry. But it really did grow me as a person. It, it taught me a lot about myself, a lot about my self-worth, and a lot about HIV. And I don't think HIV is talked about enough. I feel like I can use my platform to educate others who feel how I felt six years ago when I got diagnosed. I'm just adding more blue eyeshadow under my eyes to deepen these sockets. So one of the first times I got into drag, I dressed as a lizard creature and looking in the mirror and not recognizing myself, not seeing any single part of me that reflected Harry. It's that freedom of no one knows who I am, no one knows what's underneath here. And I, first of all, I committed to doing a 100 days of drag challenge, but I got picked up by a few different news outlets and magazines and eventually it just seemed like it was a wasted opportunity to stop it at 100 days. So I continued on to doing 365 days, which was a big commitment. And that kind of exposed me to more of an online audience and opened up my opportunities to the drag industry. And it also helped me in speed. Like I used to take three or four hours to do a full body look, but now I'm practiced and I'm fast. So my next stage is to paint all of this section like a deep, well, black. Charity case really suited my character and me as a person because I'm not really into fast fashion. I'm quite an advocate for the opposite of that, into reusing fashion and reworking old garments into new things, which is exactly what my shop does. And so charity case seemed to fit quite well for me in that in that respect. After starting my 365 days, I started getting a few requests for shows and for performances. So it was a big deal for me getting on stage for the first time. I was like a, a lumpy devil creature, doing like a strip tease to Eartha Kit, I Wanna Be Evil. And I threw a pie at someone in the audience. Um, so it was very like chaotic and um, twisted. Since then, my performances have gone from like lip syncing, throwing pies at people, to now making a potion as a witch out of toothpaste, beer, Cheetos and drinking it. So my performances have taken more of an extreme like freak show turn over the past couple of years. Which I love being able to hold a room by doing something disgusting on stage. I think that's really powerful. My next step is to paint my teeth black so that they fit in with the illusion when I put my lips on later on. And to do this, I'm gonna use this tooth paint. <sighs> there we go. Got to dry my teeth. So I'm just putting in my contact lenses. It's nice to be showing a different side to drag as well. I feel like most of the drag queens around the world tend to show the generic side of beauty rather than this. So this is just a head sock which I've made. It's kind of a nice way to just cover up my hair. Next, I'm gonna start adding some crystals to my face. Like fantasy, magical, dream world realism. I think I've always dressed quite extreme. Like, even in casual day clothes, dressing up makes me feel good and I'm never gonna like stop doing that because it feels like an opportunity missed every day to be feeling myself and having a nice time and catch my reflection in the window and be like, oh yes, like I don't wanna throw that feeling away. And the experience itself is quite adrenaline fueled. I know that there's probably gonna be pointing and laughing. I do tend to scare quite a lot of children with my looks. So I've now stuck quite a lot of crystals on my head and my cheeks. And I'm quite happy with how it's going. I've got some fins to stick on my ears. So I think I'm gonna do that next. I'm gonna add on my eyelashes next just like really big, extreme, glamorous lashes. So this is my mask, which I made this morning out of some foam and some pink tights, which I sewed tubes in and stuffed. So I'm gonna hook it around my ears to finish off my fish fantasy. Disco fish face complete. Time to get dressed and I'll be right back. Mm 
welcome back. I just put a little number on for the disco tonight. We have my gorgeous sparkly fins with this stunning leotard. My beautiful queen of the ocean crown. And you know, just a little parka to keep me warm on a night's nice evening. <laughs> I think that the limit is your imagination. And if you've got a good imagination and you're creative, then you should be able to make anything like fantastical or mythical. I found a way to live my life as a new character every single day. I like to escape from the world that we live in by being a monster from another realm. <laughs> 